Company. I'm Julia Nelson. I'm the Director of Education here at Greater Boston Stage Company. And today I'm here with Daniel Began, who's going to be directing our Winterfest title, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, and Bernie Baldessaro, who's currently on tour with Charlie the Chocolate Factory, the musical. They are both incredible teaching artists and also both alumni of the Young Company. Um, thank you both so much for being here today. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for having us. So how it started, how it's going, you both were here as alumni of the Young Company. So I'd love to hear a little bit about what your experience was with the Young Company and what your involvement is with theater now. Take Pretty, it away, Daniel Vegan. Okay, sure. Um, so I joined the Young Company when I was going into sixth grade uh, and my first show here was Cinderella. Uh, which I loved. And then starting from there, I just continued to do theater. Uh, and now currently I work at the Huntington Theater in a theater company in Boston. Uh, and I work in their education department as their manager of education operations, uh, which has been great. So I, you know, I loved acting in the shows uh, at the Young Company, but I found my love for theater education um, and actually worked it is because after I graduated from the end company, I started to work here and I still do, which is, you know, I, I really enjoy it. Hey. Um, so I began in the young company, the summer festival of 20 or uh, 2009. Uh, my first show was my fair lady in act two directed by the impeccable Caitlin Lowens. Um, who we love and miss. Um, and I, I performed in several shows at Greater Boston Stage when I was there, Stoneham Theater, um, both in the Young Company and on the main stage up through high school. Um, I went on to pursue my BFA in musical theater from Ithaca College. Um, and nowadays, I, I like to call myself a performing artist I'm because I'm an actor, but I'm also a coach and I'm also a choreographer and I'm also a teacher. So I like to dabble in all realms of, of what we do in our industry. Amazing. Let's talk about the show. So the show is based on the Roald Dahl book of the same title. Um, Bernie, you're touring with the musical right now. And Daniel, you're directing our um, the straight play for the upcoming Winter Fest. Um, rehearsals start December 6th. Um, there are many film adaptations, of course. Um, Daniel, do you have any memories associated with this story from when you were the ages of our Act Two actors in like seventh to ninth grade? I do. So the funny thing is uh the movie charlie and the chocolate factory uh came out in 2005 which is when i was in middle school so when i was in act two that movie came out and so i very re specifically remember going to the theater and watching it on the big screen uh and also the funny thing is is i, I was actually in the play version of the show as well so I have a lot of really wonderful memories, not only like spending time with family to go see it in the movie theater, but also getting the chance to act on stage in this show. I played Grandpa Joe, which was a fun role. It was the first time I played a role that was not uh, not a kid either. So it was like, it was, it was a fun challenge as a middle schooler to play an old man. Uh, but those are kind of the memories I have. It's just very fond memories of this show. Um, and of this movie. Um, and I'm just very, very excited to uh, explore it again, but this time as a director. It's so iconic. Um, and Bernie, you're touring with the musical right now. Can you tell us a little bit about what your role is in the production and what maybe your favorite thing about being on tour is or the hardest thing about being on tour? Well, first of all, my first show ever was the play version of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Fun fact. Um, so it's kind of it's a full circle moment um, and I've always I've always loved this story I have read the novel several times seen both of the movies millions of times so I'm so lucky that I get to um, be a part of this company and tell the story um, across the country this year 
Um, so my role in the show is um, I am a swing. So for those of you that don't know what that means, it essentially means that I cover many roles in the show. Um, so I cover all seven of the of the male presenting ensemble members in the cast, as well as Mike TV and Augustus Gloop. So that's nine tracks total that are in this brain somehow. Um, and you asked what the hardest thing is, that I have a lot of homework that I'm constantly doing because I have to be prepared to go on for almost any male presenting person in the show at any given time. Um, however, uh, touring, I, I've toured before and it's one of my favorite things in the entire world because I love to travel and I love to uh, get to know what different communities are like around the country and how they're going to react to different things in, in the show because unlike when you do a show in one place, for an extended period of time or even a short period of time, you'll notice that because of the community that you're in, they're going to react to certain jokes a certain way or they're going to react to certain plot points a certain way. Here, depending on where we are, they find, they find different things within the piece. And I, I always find that really interesting and, and fun to pick out, oh, this landed here, but it didn't quite land there. What a difficult but vital role you have. That's so cool. Ooh, yeah, it's wild. I'd love to hear from each of you. So maybe Daniel first and then Bernie. Um, what do you feel this show is about? What's the lesson? What's the message? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, and, you know, I think you can look at it a couple of different ways. Mm -hmm. um, for me, I'm going to say the one thing that really stands out to me about this particular piece and what I'm actually really excited to kind of talk a lot about with the cast is the, uh, the real presentation of like poverty versus wealth in this show, right? So, you know, as, uh, as a director, I, that is just what like a kind of a larger idea that I kind of grasped onto when I read the script. Um, and also seen the movie and this, you know, uh, the show many times, it's, it's just really fascinating to see, you know, Charlie in comparison to all uh, the rest of the kids, right? And there is a clear, there is a clear disparity in wealth there, which I'm really excited to talk about with the cast. Um, but also, you know, I think part, what is really at the core of the show is kind of like being true to yourself and also really like learn from your mistakes and what goes around kind of comes around right like charlie and grandpa joe are really the only ones on this journey that kind of learn from a mistake that they make in the factory right and mm -hmm. then they proceed with caution for the rest of the show while the others really just keep asking for more and more and more and more um and charlie and grandpa joe are kind of there just happy happy to be there and everyone else is yeah. expecting more than um what they're already given mm -hmm. um and so those are just some things that I'm really excited to explore about, uh, explore in the rehearsal room. Um, and so, yeah, I hope that answered your question. I'm so glad you brought that up actually, because um, it just so happens that the act one title, Robin Hood, and our act three title, Clue, all three of our titles for this winter festival are exploring these themes of greed and generosity and um, learning to stand in your integrity and follow your values. Um, so I'm so glad that you highlighted that because that's definitely gonna be a theme of this entire festival. Mm -hmm. How about yeah, you, I love that as well. I love that as well, Daniel. Um, the, but the first, the first like word that comes to my mind when I think about this story is imagination, right? There's a reason why that song is so closely connected with, um, with this piece. And in the same way that Charlie and Grandpa Joe come from one class and the others come from another, because the other kids, we call them the GTWs in my company, the, the golden ticket winners, because the GTWs come from a place where constantly getting what they want, um, they have no imagination. And in our show, um, Mike says, imagination, what's that? Like he literally doesn't even know what it is. Um, 
And Charlie is constantly imagining things. Um, so I think that's a beautiful, a beautiful message. Um, I also think this is a morality play, right? And, and something that our amazing director, Matt Lenz brought up very early on in the process is that the four GTWs, the four kids, so there's only four of them, but they sort of represent the seven deadly sins in a way. And um, I never really thought about it in that way um, until I started working on, on this piece. Um, so lots, lots of different things to think about with this one. It's not just a silly show about these, these kooky characters. There's a lot going on in there. I think there's a reason that there are so many adaptations. There's the book that it all comes from. There are stage versions called Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, musical and play, called Willy Wonka, musical and play. All the mm -hmm. movies, I'm sure there are ballets. Um, there's a reason that this story keeps getting done again and again, because there's a lot there. Um, yeah. Quickly, do either of you have a um, favorite moment of the show? It might be hard to pick just one. Mm -hmm. I love so much, um, but I think, I can't remember if this happens in, in the play version, but the very end of act two is essentially when Willy Wonka and Charlie rise into the sky in the great glass elevator together. Mm -hmm. and, and Willy Wonka offers him the, the chocolate factory. There's this beautiful, beautiful song in this production called The View From Here. And the first time we were in rehearsal and I saw both of the actors playing Willy Wonka and Charlie share that moment, I literally started weeping. It's, it's so, so beautiful. Um, so yeah, that's probably my favorite. It's a great moment. Mm -hmm. uh, I think there are a lot of really wonderful moments in the show, I, but like as, uh, you know, as a director, I think the moment that popped into my brain when you asked the question, Julia, was really the moment where, you know, Charlie opens the chocolate bar and sees that there is a golden ticket in there, right? Because as you said, Bernie, this, this show is about imagination and dreaming. And really, Charlie, that is only what Charlie has, right? That is really what keeps him going um, at the beginning of the play. Like his, where he starts the show that is kind of like the state that he lives in is dreaming and always seeing like what could be. And it's kind of the first moment for him and his family that something really amazing actually happens, right? And something changes and a dream becomes a reality. And for me, that's just a really exciting moment and a really exciting storytelling moment. So I think that is probably in my, in this moment in time, my favorite moment of the show. I love it. It's magical, but also I think we all have moments like that. So it's magic and reality. That's beautiful. I have yeah. one last question for each of you, and then we'll call it a day. Um, but Bernie, is there anything that you learned from your time in the Young Company that you find yourself employing right now while you're on tour with Charlie and the Chocolate Factory? Yes, so many things. <laughs> Uh, the Young Company was my training growing up. Like that was the place where I learned how to be an actor. And I was stretched in so many different directions while I was there playing so many different kinds of characters. Um, so I have two that, that I can sort of sum it up with. Number one, big, bold choices. That was instilled in me from day one. Always. And I keep it with me to this day. Uh, number two is I actually got my first taste of touring when I was in the Young Company. Daniel knows because we did it together. That's there amazing. Was, there was a program back in the Bay called Kids for Kids, which was essentially where uh, we, Young Company students, would travel to different elementary and middle schools during the day and perform a piece for them. There were Shakespeare shows. Daniel and I did a musical adaptation of Go Dog Go. Love it. Sure. Um, and so that sort of gave me my first taste of what it feels like to be a touring artist, 
having to adapt to different spaces, going with the flow, making things work. That's so much of, of what touring is. And it didn't feel as much of a surprise to me the first time I did this because I sort of kind of did that when I was freshman college, I mean, high school. <laughs> I love that. Daniel, rehearsals start December 6th. Auditions are coming up November 13th and 14th. What are you the most excited for our actors to discover as they start to work on this show? Oh, uh, you know, I'm going to be honest and kind of maybe steal an answer from Bernie. I think this show is just a show that kind of lives off of big, bold choices, right? Like this show, with all of the, you know, the conversations around wealth and poverty and, uh, you know, uh, imagination and all the, like, the thematic discussions, I think this show is just a a show where students can really shine and actors can really shine by making big, bold choices. So I'm really excited to get into the rehearsal room and help the actors discover uh, discover uh, and help them make those choices. Uh, I love this show so much. And, you know, I have been very lucky to, uh, to be involved with The Young Company and have been involved with The Young Company for many years. And I'm just very excited to after you know, many months of uh, being on Zoom. I'm excited to be back in a rehearsal room in person uh, and just do a show again. I think that's going to be another amazing part. Definitely. Live theater is back and we can't wait. Um, Bernie and Daniel, thank you so much for being here with me today. Um, I hope that those of you who are watching this interview will come out and audition for our show. We have a few spots left, um, November 13th and 14th to audition for Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and the Many Disguises of Robin Hood for our Acts 1 and 2 shows. Um, Act 3 is doing Clue. Um, so I hope you'll come out and audition. Um, we're going to have a great time. Thank you. Thanks, all. Bye, y'all.